Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. Over the past weeks, there have been spikes in attacks on bullion funds, cutting currencies from banks and financial institutions. But how do we find a lasting solution to this challenge? Is the purchase of a bullion vans and an act of purchasing by these banks to operate might be the best option now for us? What about an industry practice being the way out? Going forward, is it going to be a cashless economy or forcing people to undertake these things or moving away from them using huge cash might be the problem? Some have raised issues about the cultural and infrastructural challenge as in going ahead to go cashless as an economy. But what is the state of infrastructure today when we talk about going cashless? Why is it that even for those that are in the formal sector, going cashless appears to be a huge tax? How prepared are we as a country in going cashless? This evening on PM Express, we're looking at the cashless economy, a viable solution to the bullion van attacks or not. I'll be joined by the Hassan and Danny. He's a former president of the Ghana Bankers Association, Archie Hesi is Chief Executive of the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System. Mark Bedua Boaji, CEO of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And Joseph Obeng, he is with the Ghana Union of Trade Association. From the banking sector, regulators, businesses and traders. All these things wrapped up on PMX with Business Edition as you look at the cashless economy, a viable solution to dealing with this attack that we've seen over the past weeks. Take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome to PM Express Business Edition. As you look at the cashless economy, could that be the solution to the recent attacks that we've seen on the bullion vans across the country? And for we here at Multimedia, Enjoy FM, Enjoy News, would like to express our condolence to those who might have lost their lives as a result of these attacks. There's nothing to write home about, and it's not something that we should all be excited about us and what is going on. But today, um, I guess are joining me via the various uh, online platform that is Mr. Larson and Danny. He's a former president of the Ghana Association of Bankers. Archie Hesse is the chief executive of the Ghana Interbank Payment and Settlement System. More of playing or being in the regulatory space. If we talk about going cashless, what are they doing? Also, Mark Bedou Abouaji is the chief executive of the Ghana Chamber of Commerce and Industry. We're talking about businesses here. And what about traders as well? Let's look at the Dr. Joseph Obeying. He's the president of the Ghana Union of Traders Association. So let me get onto my lines on uh, Zoom. And let me first bring in Mr. Hassan and Danny. He's the former president of the Ghana Association of Bankers. And so, Danny, how are you doing? It's been quite a while. <laughs> Mr. Danny, if you can hear me, I'll just find out how you're doing. It's been a while, uh, uh, but I hope everything is okay now, sir. Everything is okay. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear, Mr. Danny. So, Thank I you. mean, for you being in this industry, and I know you're still in this industry, I mean, first, what do you make of this news that you've been hearing every day? Even we understand that just this evening there was another attack on a billion vans. Very distressing news. Very, very distressing news. Um, I think my colleagues um, are now very distressed, and our partners, uh, especially the police service, who provide us with service, um, uh, security cover, and the um, cash and transit company. Um, a very distressing time for us, uh, and, and I think initially just to uh, for us to sympathize with uh, the police officer and the lady who lost their lives in the very recent attack, and, and also a few other attacks that we didn't get this level of um, reportage, but uh, it's been a, a concern that the industry has been grappling with for some time now mm. uh, with, with the security services. Mm. Mr. Ndani, help me out a little bit. I mean, for you such an astute banker, uh, maybe some banking 101, just a broader explanation here. With all the technology that we have in banking, the platforms, I still see everyday cars riding around in town with this huge money trying to move it around. Why is it so in this day and age when it comes to these cash that you have to move from one branch to the other, from one company to the other? Maybe educate me why you have to go this way in these times as as a bank 
Well, it's the stage of development of the economy. Um, so, so we, we, in terms of investment uh, by banks, uh, thanks to technology, uh, banks have been able to put in significant infrastructure uh, to facilitate payment uh, or cashless payment. However, we're evolving as an economy uh, from very heavy cash dealing uh, to now we kind of in between transitioning from cash to cashless payment. And it's all a set of mindset change and education and also just ensuring that uh, the payers and, and also the, most, the traders have all the infrastructure available to transition into cash, uh, cash life or cashless um, economy. But it's a transition. Uh, we've seen significant drop in the amount of cash that was being paid. Uh, but you wouldn't just, it's not a snap of the finger and people would just uh, transition to um, cash uh, less or cash light uh, economy. It, it's a process uh, that is ongoing at the moment. Mm. I, I, I've engaged some of your your colleague bankers, and they tell me that, George, listen, we are committed to working with the regulators. We are committed to doing everything. But listen, uh, the recent directive from the Ghana Police Service has in getting these vans, you know, the timeline is quite short for us. I mean, for you, what do you make of some of these concerns being expressed by these industry players that we are committed to doing everything to protect the lives of people we are working with but it appears that this directive, the timing might be too short. Even if we should issue an LC today, George, it will take a long, about 90 days or even more for all these things to be put in place. The, the leadership of the Bankers Association have already articulated this position uh, to the um, uh, leadership of the Ghana Police Service. We can understand the anxiety and we are very concerned. There have been significant, significant loss of uh, lives and protecting staff. This is the service they are doing to, to the Ghanaian public. Uh, and, and while the money and the intent and the, the, the commitment is there by banks, these are specialized vehicles that have to be imported and, and all of that. So I'm sure some you know, space will be given uh, for, for, for banks to comply. And already there are some uh, armored vehicles or bullion banks already in the system. Certainly not enough, but uh, I'm sure the, 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 the authorities will work with the banks uh, given the, the reality of the situation that these vehicles have to be procured from out of their country and shipped in and cleared and all the licensing uh, done to deploy them. Mm. So, so I, believe that, I believe that some further negotiations will take place uh, to ensure that we can continue to serve the Ghanaian uh, people. It's not really uh, the problem of the banks. The banks are just a reflection of the state of the economy and we play a vital role. Uh, in trying to facilitate transactions and, and also uh, grow the economy. Mm. So whatever decisions are uh, being contemplated, if the ordinary people of Ghana, traders, and, and, and everybody whose interests have to be taken into account. Yes, the banks may appear to be at the center of it, but we are playing basically uh, a coordinating role in, 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 the, in the economy. And mm. will not, the banks will not be the ones that will be immediately impacted. Everybody else will be impacted. So I believe... Uh, the authorities will uh, uh, reflect all these concerns as they try to drive their discipline and to make sure the right investments are put in place. Mr. Nani, hold on. I'll, I'll get back to you about moving on to cashless and the role that the banks can play. But let me go on the line, and, 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 and I'll see that uh, Mr. Achihesi is also on the line with us, and I'll be getting to him very soon. But Mark Bidwa Boji is with the uh, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce. And one thing that people have said have contributed to this is the heavy dependence on cash not by those who are even in the informal sector, but the formal sector. Mr. Bedouar Bwaje, why is it a challenge for businesses or some of your members to go cashless? Well, thank you very much, George. Um, I think that um, it's so obvious that it's becoming increasingly dangerous and riskier to carry cash or to do transactions with cash. And the way to go for all of us is... Uh, cashless uh, transactions that we are talking about. But George, we live in an economy where uh, people see prestige in carrying money. So people want to go and buy something and they would want to carry a lot of money with them. And uh, that is a challenge now. So it's one sort of a cultural thing that we all, all of us will have to uh, look at. 
In fact, beyond this bullion fund, we've had uh, reports and instances where businesses have been attacked, individuals, individuals have been killed because they were carrying money. And that, for me, is very risky. And businesses, we need to change our way of doing transaction. But I think that we going cashless also requires a certain level of technology mm -hmm. and uh, financial architecture, which we would ask that those in charge, I mean, the central bank and the bank should quickly put in place all this financial architecture to ensure that if you are going cashless, you are also secure and you are safe that you can do transactions at your convenience and nothing will, will, will happen to you. Mm. And I also feel there should also be the need for an intense education, even beyond businesses, because mm. there are businesses that have a, a POS, but people still go and they want to pay with cash. Because probably they want to show off or they don't even have the card. Because I know that some of the POS will be there and people will not even use it. So mm. there should be a conscious effort for all of us to move from this cash economy to cashless economy. And I think that education is very key. Mm. We should be able to convince and educate people that it's more convenient and more easier to do transactions with that cash. So you can sit in your office, transfer money, sit in your office, buy something and pay for it. Now mobile money is something that is also, also coming up. Mm. So beyond this, don't, for me, don't uh, let us end the discussion here because we have a case of billion van being attacked and somebody, policeman, has been killed. It's just an unfortunate situation. Yeah. But let us continue with education and discussion. Mm. That is an economy that is moving from uh, using of cash, usage of cash to economy that people will do transactions conveniently mm. without cash. And I think that it is in the interest of businesses, in the interest of the chamber, because people will not be killed. People's money will not be taken away from them if you are using uh, 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 cards and all those forms of cashless transactions. So um, as a chamber, I think it has done on us that we also have to do join with the discussion, join with the um dedication so we're going to collaborate with major stakeholders the banks the central bank to ensure that we educate our members and everybody who has something to do with the business and the transaction to go cashless from now on mr bedu for you and you cited an example is cost a factor and i'll be bringing in mr Ash, yes because i want him to have the, the the final so when i i pick all your thoughts i went to a company that is an automobile company, I'll not mention the name, and it's, it's a big company. I did a transaction there. I was moving my car to pay. They didn't have a POS machine. I was trying to do Momo. It wasn't there. I get the understanding that even for your members, very educated, they make lots of profits, they are shying away from these systems that could help all of us and promote the safety of all of us. Well, I think uh, we need to begin somewhere. As I said earlier, if a business person and SME should go for a point of sale service and you, anybody that walks in wants to pay with cash, of course, it will not be effective. But we, all of us, are educating ourselves that if you go and there's, if I purchase or if I decide to use a system that will encourage or that will ensure that you can do transaction with, without paying cash, then whoever is coming in should also be able to be ready to be able to use it. Mm. But if I buy the POS and people come and they don't even know what it is, they don't even know how to use it, of course, it's not going to cost effective. Mm. So for me, the education is key. I don't think it's an issue of cost because okay. it's even more uh, cost effective or less expensive to use this POS because you can be there and you can do all your transactions in fact, transporting cash, even after taking the cash and transporting it to bank, it's riskier. In fact, I have an encounter in one of the African countries where they were transferring money from a company to a bank. And the security that was following the car, I mean, the president will not get it. And for like 30 minutes, you were all held up standing there before they were able to discharge the money. And I mean, time wasted, the money, to, to get the securities, mm. the bullion vans, and all those things. So for me, um, it, it, it's more important that all of us move to uh, a situation where we can do transactions 
with that cash, a cashless economy. And of course, it will help an economies that have really moved from using cash to a cashless. In fact, it's adding up to their GDP. Mm. So for me, cash is not an issue. It's not too expensive to get a POS, but it's so expensive to get a security person, a policeman, to help you carry your money from one place to another. Mm. Even in the course of transaction, your employees can even take the money mm. and you will lose big. So let's work towards educating even the businesses and, and uh, those that will be using or going to these shops to buy the product from them. Mm. That now on, you can use mobile money. And I think that, I mean, looking at the years back, progressively we are moving towards that. People are now using mobile money to pay for cash. They are using the POS. But we need to do more to ensure that it's, it becomes very common for everybody to transfer money via mobile or whatever it is without mm. necessarily carrying cash to buy something. I'll be looking for it for you in terms of the infrastructure and whether there should be any motivation on your side to also let you go that way when I bring in Mr. Let's. But let me do this for being uh, president of Guta. For majority of its members, they are in the informal sector. And for them, what is their big challenge in, in all these things that are happening and whilst you're trying to move persons into these uh, cashless transactions? Dr. Joseph Bing is the president of Guta. Mr. Bing, thank you for joining us on PM Express tonight. And for you, uh, what are your concerns in us trying to encourage you to go cashless? Yeah, um, it is very important. We do not have any option in this time of age. Modernity have caught us with this. E-commerce is very um, dominant in our, our way of doing business now. Um, uh, it's even overshadowing the traditional businesses. Mm -hmm. So going digital on our payment is a sure way out. The only thing left is education. If we intensify education, then uh, uh, we'll be there. Because the uh, traders themselves, especially in the info, very informal mm -hmm. sector, yeah. have now seen the convenience use of the uh, um, digital payment systems. And it, it, that is very obvious. And you, you cannot even say that even the person in the, um, the, the, the far, uh, far away um, a, a village does not even know what uh, the use of Momo and all this, the convenience of it, um, where they get their um, um, transfers and all that. So we are getting there. It's only that we have to intensify um, our distance and then provide some comfort. So uh, comfort in the sense that we should be able to eliminate um, fraud, the, the, the scanners the scanners, and then the, uh, the uh, hackers and all that. Uh, if we're able to uh, uh, do that for people to have a lot more of comfort, then that is the sure way um, forward. And I, I believe um, traders have already braced themselves up for this. Um, new um, a new technology of payment. Mm. And so um, uh, we are getting there. Mm. I'll yeah. come back to you, Mr. Bing, again for you asking the way forward to encourage more of your members to go this way. And what do you make of uh, these uh, current crimes and all those things that are going But Mr. Archie, yes, see, it might be a good time to bring you in, having you heard from all the, the players, the bankers, the businesses, and the traders. For you, there's an issue about cost somewhere, an issue about more education. And for you, sitting at your office and seeing the platforms and the infrastructure that you have and still a Georgia fee out there or maybe a covenant minister out there wanting to carry about 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 Ghana cities in the back. Are you worried? Um, <clears throat> not at all, George. Um, good evening to your cherished listeners. And I would also like to add my voice to express my our condolences to the unfortunate incident that happened uh, a couple of days ago. Mm. Um, as has been indicated by all the, uh, your, uh, my colleagues, um, we've come a long way. Mm. Uh, in terms of uh, putting in provisioning and infrastructure for us all to move away from cash transactions uh, to electronic transactions, as a country, we have more than most countries in the world. Wow. I'm talking about the, uh, if you are a merchant, you have a choice of having a point of sale. You can go to your bank or your fintech company or your, uh, and you'll be finished with a point of sale for you to start accepting uh, uh, electronic transactions. We've also moved on to the instant reels, where in this country, if you want to transfer money 
If I want to transfer money for myself to you, George, I can go to my bank's app and transfer it instantly, and you have access to the funds. I can also transfer money from a bank account to a mobile wallet and vice versa. So when it comes to transfers, the, um, the, the, what you call the provisioning or the infrastructure is there. And we all experienced this during the COVID uh, uh, period where the volume of usage increased drastically. These are all transactions that would otherwise have been carried out uh, uh, physically, using physical cash. Then when you come to the merchant's end, we've introduced the GHQR code. Now, that this, the GHQR code is the answer to most of our issues. What I would do is to encourage every merchant, every shop attendant to go talk to their bank, talk to their mobile phone company, if you, um, if you are a mobile money user, or if you assess your funds through a fintech, for you to be furnished with the universal GHQR code platform. Once you have it, all your customers will be able to make payments to your bank account or to your mobile wallet. All these platforms are there. And I agree with our viewers. What we need to do is to educate them all. However, there is also a need for the merchants to be initially finished with it. And that would enable customers to start trying it. Mm. But it's as if we have a phobia when it comes to that. But like everybody has alluded to it, there has been an improvement mm. in, in that regard. Mm. 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 But Mr. Hachi, what do you also make with concerns about the, the if we even want to go cashless and moving these uh, bulk? Let me first backtrack a little bit. Does your system support bulk transfers? So if a Kobna Mensa bank wants to move like maybe 200,000 Ghana cities to Mami Mensa's shop or something, is it, does it support these bulk transfers? Yes, it does. In terms of transfers, we have a number of services. We have the ACH direct credit, which is used for salary payments. Mm. So if a bank account holder, your employee here can pay all salaries electronically into your bank account. If it happens that uh, your, some of your employees prefer mobile money, we have the mechanisms where uh, uh, salary payments can be terminated into your mobile money wallet. So and if, if you are also a, a FinTech account holder or whichever source of funding you, 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 you prefer, all the mechanisms or the, uh, the services are there. Now, if you go to the merchant end, we do have the point of sale that accepts the GH link, or you can have an e-switch point of sale. In Ghana, we have what we call the universal point of sale as well that accepts both GH link cards and e-switch cards. Mm. But really, what most merchants and corporates want is instant payment. And it's in that regard, why we have introduced the universal GHQR code. It's like a black and white pixels. So once you have your funding, once you have your, um, if you have your bank account holder or a fintech account holder or your source of funds reside in the mobile uh, money company, mm. you can use your mobile app to scan, very simply scan it, type in the amount, press play, and that's it. Mm. And it's free to use. Absol you will not be charged absolutely anything. If on the other hand, you are a, a feature phone user. Underneath every pixel, we have a number there that is also mapped to either your bank account or to your uh, uh, mobile money account. And equally, you can make those payments. So in your, the example that you cited uh, with regards to the motor company, yeah. the question is, why don't they have a GHQR code? I believe you're a bank account holder. I believe you also have a mobile uh, money account. And you could have easily paid electronically. Mm. That's where we are. I mean, apart from education, I think that um, we should also make the use of, uh, of cash very, very expensive in this country. And that would deter, or at least uh, so, uh, move us all very quickly into electronic payments. You think that is the way to go? I think that is uh, something that would help uh, uh, when you make cash expensive to hold. Because there must be a situation, because the services are there. I've personally called the number of uh, individuals. Are you aware that you can transfer funds from a mobile wallet to another 
telco or from a mobile wallet to a bank account, and they'll tell you, yes, I'm aware of it, but do you use it? Well, I don't, etc. So there is something that we, I don't know. And, and what fascinates me, George, is that um, I, hear, I, I hear this culture, culture thing. Yeah. The interesting thing is what you are buying has also changed. So if what you are buying has changed, why don't you also change your payments method? Interesting. You yeah. told me that, um, I'll be coming to you about the bit about the costing, but uh, hold on, let me bring in, in Mr. Andani as well, uh, former president of the Ghana Association of Bankers. Mr. Andani, for you, is it a cultural thing? Or, because some will say that banks also are a reflection of the society. If you deploy all these platforms, I know people who walk into the banking hall to withdraw 50 Ghana cities, 100 Ghana cities, when it can be done on the ATM platform. No, I think uh, uh, we, if we are in a transition and uh, we, we have to acknowledge the progress we have made as, as an economy and especially to the point, the banking sector. The banking sector is a reflection of, of where we are as, as, an, uh, as a developing economy. And, and indeed, in most cases, uh, a step ahead because we, 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 have, we have to reflect what is the global trend and also serve as a full factor for development. So all the infrastructure uh, actually has um, uh, highlighted. The banks are totally switched on and, and catered to do that. And then the point that was made earlier was about education. It, it's just a habit. And, and, you know, habits are not really cultural things. And, and also the nature of trade. So for most payments that we've spoken about, C2P payments, significant amounts of it have moved to that electronic channel. P2P payments, as in the private to person payments, have moved, whether it's mobile money and or other means of uh, electronic payment. What is left is the big ticket uh, business to business payment. That's what we now need to sort of uh, shift on. So we're making significant progress. Uh, it's just unfortunate we have this security trend as the progress is coming along. Uh, but for me, um, the bank already and uh, all the architecture that uh, actually has uh, highlighted uh, it, it, we, are, we, are, we are on for it and, and again for me significantly if it's cultural the culture would have been the c 2 uh, payment but that's shifted a significant amount of that uh, is now on digital platform so we just have to and, and the big business is also the we have a very large informal uh, business sector you know our our, our uh, big traders in Makola and other trading houses still uh, collect a bit of cash, and, and that's where the transition uh, and education might be put for so that we can avoid this uh, pools of cash which serves as uh, an attraction for for our brother. Mr. Ndani, Mr. Hesse spoke about us making cash expensive to hold. How significant is that? in helping address this problem because if for instance a bank will still want to offer all these channels and a company somewhere says i want five hundred thousand delivered to me at my company and then it'll be waste do you think that we should make cash expensive to hold indeed cash is already very expensive to to to, to process the banks are bearing the cost of processing cash the inf the, the big branches the bulk, uh, the um the, the, the transport security and, and the insurance that we carry or the banks carry is because of cash. If most of it was digital, you wouldn't carry that. So there's only, um, handling cash is already very expensive, except that in Ghana, the banks are bearing that cost. I don't know what the actual uh, point it might be, whether passing it on to the users of the cash. But as far as cash handling is concerned, it's probably next to staff salaries will probably be the most and rent will be the next most expensive uh, cost to bank. M managing cash is, is a huge industry, very expensive. Uh, you have the fiscal structures that you have to build, the kind of insurance covers you have, the protection you have to give to people in handling, handling cash. It's, it's an expensive exercise. Mm -hmm. And most of the cash in transit services that we, we, we run, which is resulting in this annual rate, is done for free. You actually, pick, most banks take this cash from point to point for free from the from the trader, just you know, so that we can facilitate trade. Uh, so it's already a very expensive uh, uh, enterprise to, to deal with. It's just that the banks are, are handling it. Mm. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Um, Mr. 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 Mr.
And I know some of you banks have did that, and I maybe I don't know. I think Stanbeck as well. Where walking into the branch to withdraw from the counter was kind of an additional layer to kind of frustrate you, so that you use uh, the ATMs and the other digital platforms because during the COVID times, people did it. So why is it that it's a problem? Where so that is in the light of trying to make it expensive for people who might be demanding that bring X amount of money. All the banks have bought tellers in their whole banking hall. So is that a way to go as we try to deal with the various layers in discouraging the use of cash? Yeah, look, I mean, I think the use of word expense um, might detract from really the intent. The intent is to shift behaviors. It's to shift behaviors. You can turn at an ATM and deposit a large amount of money. You can turn at an ATM and withdraw whatever. In fact, you don't need to withdraw, you can actually, we have channels for you to pay. So there will be, uh, there will be some kind of uh, fee structure to change behavior. But, you know, it's not really intended for banks to make money or cover that. But if we use expense, maybe we, we will, yes, we should make it expensive, but the real intent is to shift behaviors from this, uh, uh, you know, handling of cash to using uh, those uh, digital channels. Mm. But Mr. Bunny, hold on there. Let me bring in Mark Bedua uh, Chief Executive of the Ghana Chamber of uh, Commerce and Industry. Do you think that for you as businesses as well, uh, maybe government has to play that leading role in all these things? After all said and done, if you still are going for your payments or from government and service provision and you're still being given those uh, huge cash in bags, maybe should they start first from government? Yes, I think, uh, I mean, from all angles, we should all now decide that we are going cashless. So if government is paying you, there is no need for government to give you this huge amount of money in a sack. It can be paid into your account. And if you are a business person and you are making a transaction, and you can also transfer the money via whatever platform, digital, electronic, to whoever you are transferring it to, then you are also safe. So um, from all angles, from government, from the banks, from the retailers, from the informal sector, everybody should now, all of us should now put our hand on deck and ensure that we, all of us, embrace the cashless system. The challenge, as uh, has been alluded to, is the informal sector that we have, where, I mean, there are a lot of transactions going on there, even though they may be small per each individual or per company to company. But I think that a lot of things are going on there. And we need to let them know the importance of this uh, cashless uh, system. Mm. And the mobile money trans uh, tra platform, I think, is, is very key. But I also think that, I don't know, I personally was trying to transfer some amount of money through my uh, mobile system. And I was told I've exceeded my limits. And I have to look for another platform and all those things. I don't know how the telcos and uh, Mr. Hesse and his team will help us out of this. You know, sometimes it becomes very frustrating where there's somebody on you, you have to do a transaction immediately, and you are told that you have a limit that you have exceeded. Mm. And people may be forced to go uh, and take cash and give it to that person. Mm. So for me, the education is key, but all of us at this point in time that we have identified that it's important that we move from using cash to cashless to look at how we can uh, all come together and, and move to that system that we are all looking for. I'll bring in Mr. Essie to respond to that question. I think it's all about reviewing the limits, but in, because of security concerns, these telcos might have placed the limit on how much you can transfer and all the rest. But have you also, with respect to what has happened recently, your colleague businesses, reviewing the way cash transfers or cash transactions are being done, being security conscious. Some people have said that a lot of businesses are not conscious security-wise when it comes to handling of cash and movement of cash from one place to the other. Of course, it's a, it's a, it's a wake-up call. And as I said, we've also had reports and instances where businesses have been attacked and individuals have been attacked because they are carrying huge sums of money. Mm. So now people are also being conscious now on how much they have on them and they need to do a lot of these transactions with, without cash. And uh, we have had a meeting on that, uh, the executives, and we're looking at a platform to also engage our members and educate them on the importance of using less cash. So 
uh, going forward, uh, the days to come, uh, we are creating that platform to do that. And for now, for every business, I mean, I mean, you don't need have you don't have to be told that mm. it's risky and dangerous to to carry cash. You may end up losing your life. You may end up also losing uh, your resources. So whatever it takes for you as a business person, my advice is that I will encourage everybody from now on to use any platform that will help them transact business without necessarily using cash. And the as I said, the platforms are there. Probably we need to educate more them more to know, for them to know and for them to appreciate that those things are there and they can use them at their own convenience. Mm. Let me bring in Joseph for being Guta president. There is talk about making cash expensive. And some are saying that the traders in the market, they are the worst corporate when it comes to still wanting to handle these physical cash. Is this something that you welcome traders in terms of maybe discouraging you from holding these physical cash? Yeah, um, thank you very much. But um, you should also realize that there's limitation for um, even the Momo where they have a perfect understanding. The, the rest, like the POS system, ATM, and all that are pro-elite. And that mm -hmm. un unless we find a way to um, educate them on the usage of these other systems and all that, they cannot be limited only to the MUMU, which is also limited by way of the threshold that um, it has on it. Then also, another frustration is the um, real time value of the transaction, uh, especially by the uh, uh, POS system. Um, once um, maybe your transaction is captured and you've seen it on the uh, the machine, the, um, and when you you want to um, the, the the trader want to see that uh, the bank has credited it, sometimes it takes about fifteen to twenty minutes, and people cannot wait for that time. So we have a lot to do. Even for uh, that's why I say that we have to provide comfort for the uh, uh, for for the end user. If we we have done all these things and then there's um, uh, no limitation as to um, how we can assess uh, monies from uh, digital sources, the real time values, and all that. Then convenience of using this system will then be um, very acceptable um, to all, and and that that's the way um, we should look at it that we, we should uh, make it as um, much as possible to make everybody accept all the other systems, the point of sale, the ATM, and then the other um, bank and uh, collect systems that they've introduced um, um, to compete with the, uh, the Momo system. Mm. So we have to do it um, uh, for it to become more attractive and then um, for convenience. And then I've also said that we should also try to eliminate, uh, eliminate um, um, uh, any form of fraudulent and that will be associated with um, uh, the um, um, digital um, um, forms of um, um, transactions, mm. um, like the hackers and then the, the scammers. Mm. If all these things are eliminated, then of course um, 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 the, 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 there's a, a clear way forward mm. for, for us to adopt this uh, a beautiful system that will help all of us. Mm. Mr. Let me quickly bring in Mr. Hesse. The bit about the limits, and I know that most of the telcos have placed limits in terms of how much you can transact depending on what you do and all the rest. Do you think that gradually we should take a look at that in also trying to encourage people to move away from the bulk handling of cash into the space? Thank you very much, George. Um, maybe if we want to take a, a step back and find out how Momo started. Um, in order for you to own a bank account, mm. there is something that we call KYC. That's the, there's a know your customer. So there are some documents that you need to uh, produce or submit before a bank account is opened for you. Now, it happens that as a result of that, we had a large unbanked in the country, i.e. those who were not able to fulfill the KYC requirements. It was in that regard, if you remember correctly, that in 2007, the central bank introduced eSwitch, whereby it was a platform for the unbanked. Moving fast track, the uh, mobile companies also came and said, right, if you are not able to satisfy the KYC, we are going to uh, offer you a lowered KYC and give you a Momo account. 
And that was how Momo started. Currently, we have three tiers of KYC. So depending on how much tickets or the size of your transactions, you can fulfill the uh, either the low or the medium or the high KYC. However, whatever you can do with a Momo account, you can do with your bank account. So if you feel that you, you have a lot of money and you perform a lot of huge uh, value transactions, you, are, you have the possibility today to use your bank's mobile app to transfer funds from your bank's account to another bank account or from your bank account to a mobile wallet. In that case, you don't need a mobile money uh, a wallet in that regard. But if you are not able to satisfy the bank's wallet, that's where you are giving the opportunity, the very least, to use the, your low KYC to at least have a Momo account and transact in that regard. In so doing, we address the on bank and the bank at the same time mm. in, in, in the country. Mm. Um, uh, Mr. Sorry, Dr. Obin made a very good point when he said that there's a need for uh, merchants to actually receive their funds instantly. Because if they, 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 if they are currently receiving cash, and cash is instant, but it is physical, if you want to replace it, you have to replace it with something that is same or better. And it was in that regard why we introduced the real-time or the instant systems. So in the case of point of sale, when transactions are made, the merchants will have access to their funds the following day. However, the real-time point of sale, if I'm allowed to use that, is the universal GHQR. So if all merchants go in for their universal GHQR, they will be able to receive funds. They will, there's a notification that comes with a similar to the P2P that Mr. Andani was talking about. And the merchant will receive an alert on his or her phone, or the company's phone, or the store's phone, that funds have been credited. If you are a high-end shop, you can also go into your banking mm. portal, and you see that funds have actually been lodged instantly into the account, and you can confidently um, uh, 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 give the goods away to whoever is, uh, is purchasing. So for, 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 for us, we strongly believe that the the the, the services and the products and services that are needed to drive cashless transactions in any country. I'm talking about the cash payment where funds are paid the following day. I'm talking about the uh, mobile money or the instant reels where we have account to account, mobile money to account, mobile wallets to another telco. They are all there. And now we have the universal GSQR code that will cater for the merchant end. So what is needed is for us all to embrace it, start mm, using it, mm, and in mm. that we are slowly going to move, uh, sort of start to uh, reduce our reliance. Mr. On, on, on Mr. Danny, I, I, I've had lots of messages on my WhatsApp, even from those in the formal sector, informal. Who is bringing the additional cost? Because people are complaining that it is also very expensive to use these platforms. If your end is free, who is doing that? No, um, what it is is that when we started, the pricing was at that time not being regulated by the central bank. That was the very uh, beginning. Apart from the products that were uh, uh, being uh, turned out by the uh, by gifts, but now we do have a payment advisory committee, and they look at all the prices that exist. Once upon a time, if you send transactions from your own mobile money network to the same or another, they charge you 1.5%. As we speak, the uh, central bank has mandated that sending, you cannot charge more than 1%. Indeed, there are some banks and there are some telcos who have actually uh, set their fees to zero. And therefore, you need to shop around and find out the cheapest. And it is the receiving bank that now pays. So there are, uh, the central bank is addressing the pricing issue. And don't forget that when it comes to payments, it's also a volume game. So the more people that use it, eventually we'll get to a stage where the maximum mm. anybody can charge might be 50 pesos or 25 pesos. Mm. But the pricing, uh, currently, the pricing is on a downward trend. Mm. I'm sure you've heard all experience mm. that nobody in this country, as we speak, is charged more than 1% for any transactions because that's the maximum limit 
that the central bank have said. Mr. Hesse, who done there, Mr. Ndani, maybe grab a, a little cup of coffee, um, Mr. Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph Bain, just grab some tea and then GNCC boys, let's have a little bit of uh, coffee and then we'll be back. We'll take a short break and be right back. This is PM Express, cashless economy. Is it a better option to deal with these uh, recent attacks on these uh, bullion vans? We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. This is PM Express. Welcome back to PM Express Business Edition as you look at going cashless. Could it be a better way in dealing with the sudden attacks on the bullion vans that we've seen now? Then time is not the last time we have to draw the curtain down. So let me go to uh, Joseph Obeying to get your, your final words in maybe, maybe 30 seconds, a minute. Uh, going forward, solutions, your final thoughts, uh, Dr. Joseph Obeying. Yeah, um, this is very important and then I, I believe all... Uh, uh, traders have uh, accepted this system. Um, we have seen the advantages of the digital payment system. And you know, uh, before people used to argue over payment, because there was no records. Now, any transaction that you do through Momo is recorded out there. So this argument, honestly argument, and then uh, fighting and all that have uh, uh, virtually stopped. And people can even use uh, this uh, 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 um, digital payment system as a way of um, um, their record uh, keeping and all that. And then the convenient uses. And then also uh, for the obvious part of uh, TV, like mm. the um, uh, arm robbery and all that, people have come to accept and so we, all that we have to do is to find a way to make it even better. Mm, the re okay. real time value thing that I was talking about, if okay. there's no real time value um, for the other systems, the Momo is very okay, but for the other ones, you have to wait till infinity before you know that um, the, yeah, the amount is credited to your account. Then um, you can also uh, waste the customer's okay. time. Okay. And then, um, so we have to be able to identify um, where the problems are and then make it better, make it attractive, and educate um, on members, conscious education, to make members mm. accept that if you're able to do that, then um, uh, arm robbery and, all, and most of those, these things will be the things of the past. Okay, Mr. Bedouin Bwaji, Chamber of uh, Commerce uh, Industry, in a minute, are we going to see business attitude change going forward? have to, because... Uh, uh, digital payment, electronic payment is more superior to uh, cash payments, less risky and more convenient. So I will encourage uh, all businesses to adopt all of us to embrace digital payment uh, going forward. And I think that uh, when we do that, uh, I think we all of us will be safe and then Ghana uh, will be the winner and our economy will be stronger. Of course, uh, as investors, we will also be looking for a secure environment uh, to invest their monies. And when we have environment with less arm robbery, uh, less fights because we are doing transactions digitally and they can also do it, uh, use it to, for their transaction, I think, uh, to move the economy forward. So mm -hmm. I will encourage everybody on behalf of the Chamber of Commerce, all businesses from now on, please let all of us embrace digital and electronic transactions going forward. Thank you. Mr. Larson and Danny, for you, there's been talk about these uh, uh, bullion vans, armored, all those things. Should we see it as an end to dealing with this problem, or we have to do other things as well? No, certainly we have to do other things. Uh, the banks will have to take a long, a long road to, to, to um, cash line. Uh, we need uh, the banks to first of all need to respond to the security situation and ensure that uh, they and the service partners and cash and transit services deploy uh, the right uh, vehicles and equipment to protect lives and property whilst we transition to this cash less society. Mm. Uh, in terms of numbers of transactions, I think the banks will report that uh, higher numbers of transactions are done on digital channels. Uh, the issue is the value of transactions. We still have uh, a small number of transactions that, but that carry a very large value in, in, um, in cash. Mm. Uh, and I think, again, the appeal going out to our traders and other uh, uh, home, I mean, trade houses uh, to ensure that they switch to, uh, okay. um, to, to cashless would be very helpful. 
and, and actually has already touched on the fact that the infrastructure is there and the banks are equipped. But unfortunately, the banks have to go a long route. Okay. Deal with the immediate situation of ensuring that the armored vehicles are provided in a timely manner. Mm. Mr. Hesse, you may have the final uh, word. And for you, do you think that uh, you still have a lot of work to do? I, I think um, collectively we all have a lot of work to do. We are happy to work with the uh, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and also with Guta team as well um, to ensure that all businesses, talking about traders, merchants, corporates, government, as well as schools, or any business at all, uh, to go for their universal GHQR code. That is the way forward when it comes to purchases. Thank you so much, Mr. Archie Hesse, Mr. Hassan and Dani, Mr. Bedu, uh, Ghana National Chamber of Commerce, uh, Mr. Fasari, Guta, great guys. I thank you so much for your time this evening. And I believe that the debate will still go on in the various homes and actually offices whether cash light could be the best option in dealing with this challenge. I'm George Jaffe. Have a great day.